Save one. Velasquez was born most probably in May 1599 and baptized on 6 June that year in Sevilla. His parents were from the lesser nobility. His father's name was Juan Rodriguez da Silva and when Diego was admitted to the painter's guild later, he signed his name as Diego Velasquez da Silva but for much of his life was simply known as Diego Velasquez. Such flexibility in naming was quite common at the time in Spain. Velasquez was an able student in languages and philosophy, but from an early age seems to have been disdained to become an artist. He is reported to have started his training with Francisco de Herrera, but the story is told that he was soon frightened of by his teacher's temper. The first reliable record of him starting training as an apprentice was in the workshop of Francisco Pajejo in September 1611. When Velasquez was 12, he seems to have spent five years working and learning there in Sevilla and on 13 March 16, 17, he was made a member of the Guild of San Luke. Just over a year after attaining Guild membership, which was essential for him to paint for church and public commissions and to take in his own apprentices, Velasquez married his teacher's daughter, presumably still receiving guidance and advice from his father-in-law. He embarked on painting bodegons. At the time, a bodegon was a low-eaten place like still life, much like a roadside cafe, and the typical bodegon painting showed ordinary people in a composition involving food and drink, such as are normally considered as genre works today. Musical trio is thought to be Velasquez's early surviving painting from 1617 and is a tentative composition of a musical variant of the bodegon. He had some novel touches, such as the small monkey set at the left and on the capable painting hanging on the wall. One aim of the bodegon was to showcase the painter's skills and his depiction of glassware and liquids is very promising for someone so early in his career. This was followed by three men at table in about 1618. Sadly, this painting in the Hermitage is the worst for its age and I show below an image which has been processed digitally to make it more re readable. These three men are set around a table on which there is bread and pomegranates. The older man is holding a turnip and all three appear to be enjoying their Magri lunch. By far the most impressive of these early paintings is old woman frying eggs which is dated 1618 and still in excellent condition. Velasquez's composition has improved greatly and the face of the old woman is super big. He includes a much wider range of reflective and transparent objects which are shown better in the detail below. The bright reflections of light on the flask of wine, the cooking pot for the eggs and the mortar and pestle are almost perfect and his handling of shadows of these objects is impressive. Even at this early stage, his brushwork in fine detail is quite painterly, a trait which was to develop and attract criticism. Later in his career. In the same year, 
Velasquez tried to mix religious narrative in a bodegon, in kitchen scene with Christ in the house of Martha and Mary. In the foreground, the two women are busy preparing the food in their kitchen in true bodegon style. Common to his earlier paintings are the mortar and pestle and axe. Then seen either in a framed mirror or perhaps through an internal window such as a serving hatch is the religious narrative of Christ with two women, one kneeling at his feet. Careful, examini careful examination of the four women suggests that none is duplicated and this in turn implies that the younger woman in the foreground is Martha who looks miserably towards the viewer while Mary is the figure set at the feet of Jesus in the mirror. Although relatively unusual in Spanish bodegon at the time, casting a religious scene within such genre food scenes was well known in their Dutch Golden Age equivalents. Slightly later in 1619, Velasquez reworked the three men at table into this peasants at table, which is in better condition and better composed and executed. It's more tightly cropped on the three figures, with no puzzling background detail to interrupt. The figures are engaging with one another writer than the viewer and the man whose head is shown in profile at the right is painted very convincingly. These bodegons were successful in driving attention to Velasquez's talent and skill. By 1620 he had started to receive commissions for portraits and his later bodegons show his career starting to de develop. This was just as well as Velasquez's wife, Joanna, gave birth to their first child, Francisca, in the early summer of 1619. He now had a living to make for his family. This weekend, to provide some background to this series on Velasquez, don't forget to press like button and subscribe if you like this video. If you want to support this channel with your donations, you can subscribe on Patreon. Goodbye now, until we meet in another episode. Bye now.